Okay. So 12, 14, 17, 18, and 20. Um, hopefully they get the X intercepts and such labeled. Um, 12, very straightforward. This one, this one has just been, this has just been stretched upward. Okay. Um, again, I don't expect you guys to do this with a table of values. I think that's pretty primitive. Uh, 14. Um, looks like it's been slid down. Okay. The axis of symmetry. One thing to real to make sure you realize: axis of symmetry is an equation. X equals zero. That's not just um, representing a point. It's representing a line, and you'll see that a little bit later on. 17. Um, kind of the same type of situation, just been moved up, and then 18, now it's been moved over. Now you're starting to see that um, your axis symmetry is the vertical line x equals 3, okay? Your x-intercepts are 2 and 4, I think we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, 20, um, that's what it should look like there, okay? Like your vertex is 2, negative 2, and 37. Okay. Like your vertex is negative 6, negative 5, and all that. Okay, so review a little bit verbally. Um, how, do you find a, how do you find a vertex? Negative b over 2a gives us what? The x coordinate. How do I find my y coordinate? Okay. It opens up if what? A is greater than 0. Okay. It opens down if it's negative. It's steep and skinny if greater than 1. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, so give me a leading coefficient or an a that would lead to something opening down and being really wide. Negative one fourth. Okay, negative one fourth. That'd be fine. Okay, um, we've got a lot to talk about in this section, but um, we'll have to come back and, and hit some of that here uh, starting Monday. Okay, anything you want to talk about from this? Thirty-seven. Okay. Um, so let's take a quick gander. Gander at it. Okay. So I'll just kind of sprint through this really quickly. Um, so nothing changes. The only thing that might change here are the um, are just when you have decimals and such. It's just going to change your uh, just the way you calculate just a little bit. So I've got my negative b over 2a gives me negative 3 over 2 times 0.25 gives me negative 3 over 0.5, which gives me negative 6. Did you get that part right? Okay, so that's probably your issue from there. Okay, no matter if this is a decimal, whether it's fractions or whatever the case may be. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. So that's really pretty important. No doubt about it. That's very important. And then other stuff we can tell right away. This one's going to open up, going to be wide, and it's going to have a y-intercept of 4. And then from there, your vertex is going to be negative 6. Plug it back in, you're going to get your negative 5. Okay. And from, that, from there, usually we go over, up. We go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. Hello. Okay. Is that what you're going to do in this case? No. So what do, what do I have to do with this 1, 3, 5 so I know where to go? Times it by that. So it's actually going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 1.25. So I'm going to go over 1, up a quarter. From there, over 1, up 3 quarters. From there, over 1, up a 1 and a quarter. Okay. Now, you can use this, or if you want to, you can plug in points doesn't matter to me. Okay? Okay. <coughs> so here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. 
Anything on the uh, multiple choices? First page, 66 through 69. Any of these? Come on. Yeah. 68. Okay. 68, show response. Each side of the square base of the pyramid is 20 feet, and the pyramid's height is 90 feet. What is the volume of the pyramid? Okay. Well, if we take a look here, I'm going to just draw a really quick sketch because I like to draw pyramids. I'm fascinated with the Egyptian pyramids, to tell you the truth. Um, and the height is 90. So this is a narrow and tall pyramid. Okay. So first thing is our formula volume is base times height. What's the big B stand for? Area of the base. Okay, and it's not going to be this formula alone because that gives me the volume of like a cube or a box. This thing comes to a point, so it's going to be one third. Oh, okay, okay, it's one third. Okay, so we're going to have one third the area of the base times my height, and this we can calculate all by hand if we want to. Okay, one third of ninety gives me thirty. 400 times 30 gives me 12, 1, 2, 3, 12,000 cubic feet. Okay, that's one third. Okay, anything else on this first page on the multiple choices? You guys do okay with 66? Okay, good, good. Hopefully that goes pretty quickly because 8 all the way down to 1. 5 all the way down to 1. What do you have left over? 8, 7, 6. You multiply 8, 7, 6. Now, right now, after all that we've done, how would you guys do 69? Would you actually solve this? Or what would you do? I'm just curious. Plug them in. You can definitely plug them in. And that's a choice you have all the time. Okay, And, and it's, it's kind of kind of weird that we spend all this time working on substitution and elimination and Kramer's rule and inverse matrices and all this other good stuff, but a person could just get this right by plugging it in. Okay? Now this one you could also drive a negative through here and then you can get your equation pretty easily. 3x equals 6, or 3y equals 6, and then you can see that x is 2. Okay? So realize if it's really, really, really easy as far as what the combination is going to be, it still might be faster to just go ahead and solve the system. Okay? Granted, you know, because on this one, plug in A, it doesn't work. Plug in C, it works. And then I have to work in the other one. So there's some time plugging in there, too. Okay? Don't draw in your book like I just did. You know, let's do as I say, not as I do things. Okay? Anything on the next page? 57 through 60? Yes? 60. Find the next term in the sequence below. Okay. It looks like it's 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. Okay. Oh, I see what the issue was here. So the next term would be 5x. Okay. And the bottom, 5, 5, 5, 5. And then they just cancel out. You get x. Okay. I kind of like that one because there's a little cancel in there too. Okay. Question. How'd you guys do on 57? Can you do okay with that one? Because I'm starting to see that on our ACT stuff, we're not doing very well with probability. So I think we're going to slide some probability in here pretty quick. Are you guys okay with this or not? Okay, see, so you nod. Okay. Um, student round would choose a marble, then without replacing, you choose a second marble as a probability. Student chooses red, then the green. I just want to address one thing here, just in case somebody m missed it. Okay, um, five different colored marbles, okay, so red, then the green, okay, the red, well, we got five different marbles, okay, on the first one, what's the probability that they are going to get a red? One fifth. one fifth, okay, the red's now gone, what's the probability they're going to get a green? Mm -hmm. One fourth, what do I do with those two probabilities? I multiply them. I think there was a problem on your ACT practice test that you juniors just took last week 
where you had to multiply two probabilities to get the overall probability. Okay? So you take the probability of the first one, probably the second one, multiply them together. Don't add them. Okay? Multiply them together. Okay. So we have about um, 15 minutes, and I don't know if it's going to be possible to do what I want to do, but I'm sure as heck going to give it a shot. Okay? Yesterday I asked you guys to um, to do that little survey and stuff, and honestly, the results I thought I thought were, were interesting, and and um, I really didn't get data that would work real well in, in making a um, a transition matrix, but um, I got enough information I could at least make it uh, workable for you guys. Um, before we do anything, let's have a little discussion. Um, which is what you, you just just your opinions kind of share why you have your opinion um, why is either not wearing seatbelts worse or why is either texting and driving worse yeah okay oh okay so you're looking at it from the idea that the act of te texting itself is what is causing the accident. Oh, okay, I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, that's good, that's why I like talking to you guys about this. Um, because if you don't wear your seatbelt, is that fact in itself causing an accident? No, oh, hmm, I like that. Okay. Um, what about, you know, actually any other opinions? Okay. Um, and actually, in here, it was probably about uh, three fourths of you guys thought texting was worse. Okay, and I really didn't change you know, the videos didn't change many minds at all. Okay, so I'm going to kind of set up a, a, a little, you know, theoretical hypothetical here more than anything. But um, the one thing that 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 um, that I base a lot of my value judgments here is. Is a decision that you're making, does it have a, a potential to impact my life? You know what I mean? Okay. Um, you know, in, 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 in my opinion, <clears throat> you know, if somebody wants to stay home and do drugs, hey, you know, that doesn't really impact my life. I'm not, it's not the end of my world. It's not going to change my world much at all. Should they? No. Not good for them. But, you know, sometimes government oversteps and, you know, I don't know, maybe they shouldn't worry about what's what this what's good for people, what's not, but I don't know, some people need some guidance too. But on the other hand, one of the things that just gets me more than anything is like drinking and driving because that has a potential to impact my world a lot, okay? So as far as that goes, that's why I think texting is probably worse, okay? That's just my opinion. Doesn't mean that, you know, if you think the other way that it's wrong, okay? <clears throat> um, and I just think that's a growing, 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 growing problem. I chose to show another video to the other class that was a little bit different that, talk, that, that highlighted the idea that every time that you take your eyes off, off the road to text, you average, the average is 4.4 seconds that your eyes are off the road. Okay? And if you are traveling at 60 miles an hour, that's 88 feet per second. Okay? So if we take your 4.4 seconds times 88 feet per second, and remember that's at 60 miles per hour, okay? And then we take that and we get 4.4 times 88, and we get 387 feet. So you're going to travel 387 feet before you look back up the road. I think that's pretty phenomenal. That's a long way. That's a football field and a third, okay? And then you change this to you know, if you're going down to Fremont, you're not driving 60. Okay? It's 70 now. A lot of times people drive 75. It is 70 now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, good, because I just wanted to make sure I'm not breaking the law. Okay? Because I've never sped before in my life. <coughs> okay? And then that distance even increases as you go faster and faster and faster. And one thing to keep in mind, too, and this is kind of weird, is that your speed and your stopping distance are exponentially related, okay? So if I would just do a little graph here, 
your speed and your stopping distance, okay? As your speed increases, your stopping distance increases exponentially, okay? When you double your speed, you quadruple your stopping distance. So say if I'm theoretically going 30, okay, uh, and let's say it takes me 50 feet to stop. Now if I'm going 60, boom, now it's going to take me 200 feet to stop. When you double your speed, the laws of physics tell us that it's going to take you four times as long to stop. Okay, so anyway, um, I, 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 I think texting is is a is a bigger deal okay now um, and who's gonna have the guts in here to raise your hand that you have um, looked at your phone when you're driving in the last couple weeks I'm raising my hand because I have just to be honest should I no okay so what that requires is just requires a greater se greater sense of discipline on our parts and myself included okay my wife, she's amazing. Her discipline is crazy high. Um, she's like, if, if I call her when she's driving, she don't answer. You know, just because she's, she's driving, okay? Um, and she realizes how important a deal that is, and I probably need to get better at that. Um, so uh, I did find a couple videos that were a little bit too graphic to show of people actually on their phones, like a, a bus driver's on their phone, and um, and boom, just ended up just here and then just a bunch of people and, and it was probably nasty, okay? Um, but I like your insight there that um, it's, you know, lack of wearing a seatbelt doesn't cause an accident, okay? But bottom line, I'm, I'm my, what we need to adopt is um, phones off, belts on, okay? Phones off, belts on, belts on, okay? Uh, so anyway, so now let's take a look at what we were doing yesterday and why I asked you to do that, okay? I just had this big stack of paper. I must have brought it back to my desk. Anyway. Okay. We may not get to the graphing calculator part. Okay. Let's, a transition matrix. Don't write this down. A transition matrix will show what happens, you know, either over a period of time or oh, after being exposed to a commercial or after being exposed to an advertising campaign of some sort or um, being exposed to a public service announcement like I tried to do with you guys yesterday, okay? And actually, kind of somewhat came from your information yesterday, you guys were from seat belts and text being what you thought was the biggest no-no and two seat belts and text being the biggest no-no okay um, so seat belts what this means right here is people going in 90 percent of the people still believe that seat belts were the biggest deal okay but 10 percent of the people change from thinking seat belts were the most important to texting be the most important. Okay? So, on the other hand, I'm all sorts of troubles lately. <laughs> um, only 5%, uh, actually, the people that were texter, that believed texting was worse and still believe texting was worse was 95%. And 5% of the people changed their minds the other way. So do you see why they call this a transition matrix? What was the transition from before the exposure to this event to after the exposure to this event? Okay, what's going to happen? I suppose you could even say this, you know, have something like this about a, a medicine or something like that as well. So then what we do is we, and this we gathered from a small sample. Okay, we, have you ever heard of like a, um, oh, I now I can't think of the word, a focus group? You guys know what a focus group is? That's where, you know, they take a, 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 a few people, expose you to something, learn something from that focus group, and apply that to the bigger population as a whole, okay? So we, you guys were my focus group, okay? 
and we have 1,000, 3,000. Let's say now I'm going to take it, I'm going to apply this um, to the pocket. This is people, and this is the people that thought seat belts were the bigger no-no, and texting was the bigger no-no. And I want to apply this transition matrix, you know, showing the videos, and see what the people felt afterwards, okay? So, if I go ahead, grab your calculators for me, please. If I would go ahead and multiply these, you probably should be able to do this without your calculator, but just in case. If I multiply these two matrices, I'm going to go 1,000 times 90%, okay? And then 3,000 times 0 0.05, and I'm going to add those together. What do I get? One thousand fifty. You guys agree? Okay. So why does this work? Because the people that now believe in seatbelt use being the worst, ninety percent of them were. You know, we take a thousand times that point nine, and five percent of these people are coming from this three thousand people. So now, if I take a thousand times point one, and three thousand times point nine five, okay. 10% of these people, 10% of these 1,000 are going to believe texting is worse. 95% of these 3,000 are going to believe texting is worse. And so what do we get? Okay. So did you see a little bit of a change? Yes. This is seatbelt use, this is texting use, and this is the people after. And this is the people before. Okay. That's all right. Okay. Um, so anyway, can you think of a situation where a researcher or somebody might be interested in using a transition matrix? Okay, well, yeah, okay. Um, because they, they, might, they might show, might get their opinion before the movie and opinion after the movie and decide what's going to happen. Okay? Another thing, politics. Can you think of how they would use this in politics? Voting choice. Voting choice before a debate and voting choice after a debate. Okay? We can make an uh, implication about if we just, uh, just um, interview a hundred people and then we can make some implications to the, to the public as a whole. Okay? So this idea as far as making choices using a transition or making predictions using a transition matrix is a pretty big idea. Okay, like um, should they should they give coupons anymore in the paper? Well, uh, I don't know. Will that change your your opinion? Like say right now, what's your guys' favorite pop to drink? Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Okay. If I give him a coupon for a case of Coke and he uses it, do you think there's a chance he's going to become a Coke drinker? Possibly. Well, we're dealing with Dr. Pepper. It's pretty tasty. Okay. Okay, but there's a chance. So before they start this advertising campaign and invest thousands and thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, they're probably going to try this on a few people and see what the result is. Okay, and, uh, and they're going to pencil it out and see, okay, if I have more people drinking our stuff than before because of this, but the advertising campaign cost me a million dollars, will we make up that million dollars in profit because we gained a thousand customers? Okay. So this idea of a transition, a transition matrix is a really pretty important one. Okay. So we're not going to need the graphing calculators today. We're just not going to have time. Okay. But here's what I want you to do tonight. I'm going to have you do two more graphs. And then we're going to come back and, um, and nail that um, on Monday as far as applications go. 2, 25, numbers 39 and 40. These situations, they will have a potential, um, your negative V over 2A is going to be a little bit hairier. I'm just going to show you one thing. I'm not going to be able to give you, you know, the time to do a whole example. What if I said negative V over 2A is 4 over uh, 3 fifths? 2 times 3 fifths. Okay. Well, here's what we do. Negative 4, and then this will be over 6 fifths. How do I divide fractions? Negative 4 times 5 6. 
So just remember, if your A is a fraction, that's how we're going to deal with it. Okay? I know you guys are likely going to grab your calculator and have it do it for you, but I at least want to remind you that you can do it really easy without. Okay? Times 5, 6, three, 2 goes into that 3 times, 2 goes into that twice, so we have negative 10 over 3. You know, that's just another way you can do it. Okay? So, graph paper, 39, 40, um, should find all of the information, not just a graph. Now let's find your y-intercept, your vertex, um, and plot additional points. Okay? Can you what? Oh, yes. You have like a minute. Thank you.